I do really like this next question. The, mm -hmm. um, any tools that you started using this year that you weren't using last year? Are there any that come to your mind? I mean, obviously we're using reach reporting, so that's, you know, higher on our list and my, my favorite one at the moment. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've been doing, I started using chat GPT in 2022 already, but right at the end and didn't really use it properly. I would still say I, I scarcely use it. Like I'll, you know, I'm trying to get better at using it and just trying to be part of my process more often than not. Um, so that's one thing that I'm using better this year than I have before. Um, I just started using Riverside. So that's, uh, that's uh, a new step. Um, cause I've just committed to a weekly live show on our YouTube channel, Love it. committing 52 weeks and, uh, you know, the YouTube live panel is not great to start with. Um, so there's that technology. What else is open on my computer right now? I think that's, you know, probably high on the agendas of the items that I've started using that have all made a big difference in the way I do things. Um, but a lot of what we've done this year is just to lean much more into the technology we were using before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so like we we're using carbon for like seven years now, but we're opening up more and more doors of different tasks and client tasks and using their portals and, you know, diff just different things like that. Um, and then we're busy working on a bunch of new technology that we're going to implement in the new year. Obviously the one I mentioned already is potentially moving to teams away from zoom, but there's a couple of other pieces, which, you know, hopefully we can sort of make some decisions here in the next few months. And on maybe on our next phone call, I can tell you all about them. I want, I'm super excited for, but I don't want to like, you know, put it out there yet. It's sort of top secret project that we're working on. It, it's totally internal and it'll change okay. the way we operate rather than the way we do clients. Hmm. that it's going to make a massive difference internally, I believe. Um, hmm. So I'm super excited for, for that piece of software. Once we decide we're, we're sort of stuck between two right now, um, being told, keep getting told the one is the better one and there's a lot to show for it. And I'm potentially going that way, but you know, that's sort of where we are. So the, the long answer is a little bit of new technology, but mostly just leaning into the technology we have a lot more. I'm really glad that you said that though. I think it's often overlooked, especially when we have the new sexy things like AI is like, we just do what we're so prone to, which is the shiny object syndrome of let's jump to the next thing without really thinking and like taking a step back to say, what about the stuff that we already have? Are we actually utilizing it in its fullest potential in our broader ecosystem? I mean, like the example you gave before that was, that also rings true to, to today is like, are we really use, utilizing the Microsoft suite to the, what we're actually paying? And I think that's like, if that would be one thing I would want the listeners of this episode to take away is like, really like challenge yourself to say, okay, I know that this one is technically like objectively is a better product in this one specific thing, but like, can you get away with what you already have? So great example for me is like, I am not the biggest fan of ClickUp's time reporting or time tracking. It's just objectively one of the worst time tracking solutions that's out there. That being said, we can save hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars a year by using what we already have in ClickUp's system rather than getting this time tracking app over here and this thing over here. We can just do what we can to use what we've got in front of us. Yeah, it's kind of buggy. Yeah, it doesn't have the level of reporting we'd like, but like, it's good enough. Um, and I think that that's, that's so overlooked or like I'm using Google meet for pretty much all of my meetings, even with my clients. And mm -hmm. because we're a fully Google shop, like we don't, yep. we don't use Microsoft or anything like that. Um, and so again, is zoom technically better? Yes. But like Google meet is good enough. Um, and especially if we're coming into what a lot of people are, uh, believing, uh, you know, we haven't quite hit the recession, but we kind of have, you know, things might continue to be a little hard. It's like, why extend yourself going after all these bright, shiny new technologies when what you already have is probably good enough. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we, we sort of started talking about it, right. Is I look at technology a lot, like all the time, you know, once a year, I'll do a shout out for payroll companies. Let's look at that. Was it QuickBooks connect looked at a bunch of shiny technology over there. But I have to look at it and go, is it going to be better than what I already have? Yeah. And if it is, is that better worth the extra price? Because mm -hmm. nothing new is cheaper than what I'm using. That's right. Yeah. You, know, you think about the change. Like, 
yeah, the change costs. Yeah, especially we've been there for a long time, right? Like, you know, we love carbon, my favorite tool out there. It doesn't mean I don't get hit up by multiple people all the time telling me, or I'd rather use our practice management software. Mm -hmm. They're like, we're cheaper. I'm like, not, not how much I'm paying. I, have, I have, yeah. you know, I'm grandfathered in here, guys. Like, I've been here for since the beginning. You know, there was, you know, like 20 of us when we started. Now there's, you know, thousands of people. Mm -hmm. We've been around for the long run, and it's not even that the change management around it, it would just be ridiculous. And yeah. the cost of change management is something that people just don't think about. And, you know, maybe a little different for you because smaller operation, but we're nearly 40 people. Yeah. You know, the lot. training time, we're just sent out training. You know, we've been sort of working with a small group on reach reporting, and we did a training session with them with, the, with our US based team. 45 minutes, 50 minutes, right? That's eight of us at 50 minutes. Now let's go add another 31 people at 50 minutes. You know, we've got a work That's week. Expensive. There. Yeah. A whole work week of work to training with one piece of software. Yep. So they even look at the sticker price. Like, what did that cost you to even get people ready? And that they're not even ready, right? They've just watched a video on what it can do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's more to it. And it's so easy to get dragged in. There's a lot of guys out there, a lot of good accounting content guys selling technology that works for them mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you yes very 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 true um back to the question of any new tools that we're using i myself i had been using kapwing for my video content um i would say for my like lightweight video content you know because i have a you know for my youtube videos and my podcast um i'll use like a desktop application but Kapwing is a online um, video editing tool. And I, I've been hit up by multiple people on LinkedIn. They're like, dude, who does your video editing? And like, now I do want to give a shout out to my, my video editing guy um, who we started working together. He gave me a lot of great uh, ideas about like, even like why my video setup is the way that it is right now. Um, so Mateos in um, Slovenia, you are a rock star. Love the work you do. We, we stopped working together for a little while, but I took a lot of what I learned from him and implemented it on my own. Not as good as what he does, but uh, a lot of people still came to me and were just like, dude, who does your video editing? And I'm like, you can use AI tools to make this, like, I don't do my own captions. I let AI do the captions for me. Mm -hmm. um, and you just create simple templates and a really sustainable, repeatable process. And you keep on churning out that good content. You're going to get, the type of resonance with people where they feel like this is like super professional. Um, Kapwing just recently launched a new AI functionality in their, um, in their tool where you basically upload a big video and then you let it, you let AI read the transcript and identify like five to 10 highlights, like 60 second clip highlights. And it actually did a really good job. So I'm actually, I'm really excited to, um, the most recent podcast episode that I recorded for the Dev Launch podcast, I, um, I'm using that tool and it identified a few things that I'm like, all right, this is going to be my content for the next, you know, couple months. So. And that's a K P W I N G. K A P W I N G. That's right. Kapwing. Yeah. And that's kapwing.com. If anybody's interested in taking a look, mm -hmm. I just looked that and said, we're building an AI creation tool with G. ET4. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. what Tony was talking about. And uh, it's a nice, pretty website. It looks fairly simple. It uh, really what is. I can see. Yeah. I've and been then, using it. Like I said, I've been using it probably for the better part of a year now. And, you know, again, it does not have the full functionality of what a desktop application could have. Um, it's not my favorite in all circumstances, but I think where it really shines is just in the lightweight, simple content, short form content. It does a really great job, in my opinion. And it's like really affordable. So stamp of well, approval. I will 100% be checking it out because at the moment I'm just downloading long long form videos, snipping what I want to say and writing text around it. Um, so if I can up my game a little bit, that would probably be helpful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's definitely still one of these pet slaves that are way out of my comfort zone, but you know, we keep trying. But, but that's just it is it's like, man, it, it, this is like the, the aspect of AI that I think we don't talk enough about, which is when it can help us to more sustainably and repeatably deliver 
content or whatever that thing is, we're just more likely to feel comfortable in that space, right? Like I might come in, be like, oh, I'm not, I'm not great on content. Well, really what you're saying is there's not a really good process for you or it's too cumbersome or it takes too much time. And so it, it, it's something that you actively avoid in your mind because it feels like such a, such an investment, but man, the second you start lowering that barrier to entry and now it becomes an easy thing. And oh, by the way, in that 15 minute period of time, like you were talking about an example of you're coming back from a conference, you can be chatting with an AI to help you get your ideas down on paper. Well, that's like half the battle, right? Um, if we create those sustainable kind of methods and uh, cadences in our life, you can now become a content king and, you know, it, and pe people will be like, wow, like I have, I really want, I look up to what you have to say and, and that kind of stuff. So I don't know. That's a good yeah. thing of AI. And it sort of, you know, like a thought popped through my head because my, my phone, my watch, my Apple watch just popped, right? And um, this is new for me. So this is actually a new piece of technology that I'm using that I moved to. And, you know, basically what you're saying there is that technology needs to be able to help you stay accountable, right? And stay consistent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what my watch is doing for me. It's got these little rings that are very judgmental that tell me I need to burn so many active calories. I have to do so much exercise and I have to stand up every day. Mm. Right. And, you know, there again, it's giving me a warning. Now you've been sitting too long. Think about standing. <laughs> but um, that sort of thing's important. Right. And that's what AI can do for you. It can help mm -hmm. hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like you just even think about little things like my Alexa, like I'll be sitting making dinner on a Sunday and all of a sudden pop up and I go, you know, evening Zane, reminded to take out your trash cans. Like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> got to do that. It's pouring with rain yeah. outside, but I better get outside and get those trash cans out. Also, I'm gonna, it's going to suck the next week because mm -hmm. I won't have any place to, you know, put that, that trash bag. Mm -hmm. So you got to think about it from that standpoint. And I love the way you sort of summarize that, like the hold you accountable, put you in a good place, set you up to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, all those things that we know you need to do to be successful. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's it's really it's simultaneously like groundbreaking technology and also not that big of a deal because at the end of the day it's really just driving us towards more intentional living in a way that's you know moving the needle forward for you as a person, um, and that's where I think we're going to lose sight if if we look at AI as being this magic cure all instead of it being yet another tool that we're using to live a more fulfilled and full life, um, like. Yeah, if, if we're if we're still miserable, if we're still not living a full life, I would argue that like is AI really making that good of a big of a difference? Like, yeah. I'm curious.